totally awesome fishing show. Quite simply the best fishing show on YouTube and I am, yes, the best fishing show producer. No question of that. I'm sorry, you were a fishing TV presenter as well. But you're good looking, you're perfect, your hair's plastic by the look of it. I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it. Get off of me, you pervert, what's the matter with you? I've got to take these people fishing. Anyway, we're going to go checking out and seeing what small streams can be found, swims. It's really upset me, that guy. Why don't you just leave? I'm the real fishing TV presenter. <laughs> Let's go down this small stream and see if we can find some swims. <sighs> Thinks he's a good TV presenter. <sighs> Think again. For many anglers, going fishing down the river is a great release valve from the stress of everyday life. Just being beside moving water is a great relaxer but you still want to catch fish. So exactly what do you look for in a good swim? The fish aren't everywhere along a stretch. They will be in specific areas. So the Totally Awesome Fishing Show thought you might like a few tips of what to look for in a small river. Well guys, I've never fished here in my life before. I went on the local fishing tackle shop in Gately and the guy said there's a free stretch up there and he's told me where to come. Back end of the season, we're just trying to squeeze a few days in that you can when it's really good. We've got about an hour and a half. <laughs> totally awesome fishing in one and a half hours. We'll probably catch nothing, but the idea is to give you some tips on small stream fishing. Now, there's a lot of small streams got some good fish in there. And I know people fish here because I can see a float stuck up the tree over there. And it's well worn, so it obviously pretty well gets a hammer. But there's a good spot here underneath these trees, but I'll tell you what you want to do with small streams. Don't fish the downstream first. What you want to do is work your way up, say, four or five swims. We've come past, I think, reading the swims, one, two, three bends, and a nice long straight here that's smooth. So I got four swims, one and a half hours. Don't bait up the bottom one first, bait the top one first. And then any food that's going down, when you change swims to go downstream, hopefully those fish are going to be picking off the leftovers from here. Well, let's just hope there are some fish to pick off the leftovers. We're going to be using match rods because it's a short session. Over there opposite us is, oh man, if you could only be here, it's lovely. Yes. It's a sewage farm, but we cannot record sewage smells on the camera yet. But they told me I'm in exactly the right spot. There's a good chance of a few mixed fish. It's, yeah, it's not a big fish place, but... Wow, what can I say guys, it's fishing, it's the end of the season, it's a nice evening. We'll give it a shot here at Totally Awesome. First, Mike's going to show you, putting the bait on, and then I'm going to get a gun and shoot those geese. Right guys, here's our ground bait mix. Just our standard, totally awesome, bread and bran ground bait mix. We've mashed it up before we've come here. It's always important to be prepared. We've only come for a short session, so we've done this before we come here. Let it soak for about an hour. Um, if you want to know where you get your brand, type it into your search engine, your local horse feed suppliers. Uh, there is a video we have carp fishing or somewhere on our carp fishing playlist and you can find it on there. Uh, so we're going to try and chuck this in little and often, well, actually a lot and often. Um, and then we're going to throw in a couple of maggots, uh, put some maggots on the hook and hopefully get some fish. Golf ball sizes, about that big. And throw in as much as you can. Right guys, here we go. We've got our maggots. 
Uh, these are left over actually from our epic trip on the Hampshire Raven on the weekend. Uh, I'm surprised we've actually got some left over. But uh, again, that was another short session. Now, these have been in the fridge, so these should last another five days or so. Um, you throw in half a dozen or so, just after you've thrown in some ground bait. And then, as soon as you can, put three, three, or, three or four on the hook. All right, guys, try and cover the hook as much as possible, because this has fished quite a lot. So it's important to cover that hook as much as you can. So with the first maggot, what I'm going to do is just slide him down and pop him over the eye of the hook like that. Right, so he's sort of sliding up the line almost. That helps me to cover as much of the hook as I possibly can to get the second maggot. What I do is I squeeze them and just come in at the side of the maggot. Because sometimes these maggots, they're a bit old. They're actually a bit difficult to get on the hook. So just come in through the side a bit and the body. And don't go through the whole body like you would with a fresh maggot sometimes. If they're a bit, few days old, it's, quite, it's a bit easier to go through the side. Pop one more on there. Right, there we go, guys. Covered as much as possible. Wriggling around just a bit. But now it's important to throw half a dozen, dozen maggots into the river and hopefully get a bite. Check out the deeper edges by ironwork or stone support walls for perch and chub. Avoid swirly boiling surfaces as they can indicate some sort of obstruction underneath. It might be weed beds, boulders or general shallows. Look for a constant smooth surface Many match anglers feed on the little and often basis, but I reason that your feed is just washed down by the current, so you need to keep a good supply going in. If it's a small stream or river, the fish are unlikely to be near your feet. So drop your float or ledger at least three quarters of the way to the other side. Look for the main flow of the current, try down there, and then move your bait to the edges where it might be slightly slower. If you use a float, keep in constant contact with it. No bellies in the line or you miss the bite on the strike. And remember, a gentle strike sideways with your wrist will set the hook. Not a huge jerk upwards that just sends your tackle up a tree. Take your time. Watch the length of your rod if the trees are overhead. Tangles are frustrating and you waste good fishing time when you have to tackle up again. Hey guys, another little tip of fishing small streams, you can't possibly get a fish out of there. You could leisure from the upstream end, probably going to cart you down in it when you hook up anyway, but there's almost certainly going to be some chub in there. So what you do, draw them downstream, just walk up, throw some of this bread and bran mix straight into the branches. I'm sure the ducks will love it if the fish don't, but at least that way it's percolating down through all that overhang that you can't fish and the fish will drop back feeding on it, fingers crossed, you should get something. Right guys, we've given it a good few casts here, a couple of trots down, not had a bite. We've had one guy actually just come up to us, uh, he's been uh, ledgering for chub on some meat and he's had a 5.5, a 3.13 three or 3.14, uh, he's, he's a six pound pike he lost, um, he's had a brilliant day but he has been here all day. So uh, we've got 45 minutes left, can we catch, who knows, we're going to move on downstream with the ground bait, with the maggots, let's hope we can get something. Well, nothing in those two swims, guys, but move down here. This one looks more like it. This is a classic bend where we've got a lovely sewage outfall over there. I think it is, I can hear it, something spray. If only a nose could get, uh, get it back onto the film or something like that. But we're going to try along the inside, we're going to try along the back there. There might be fish over, we're slightly slacker on the outside of the bend. So this is a nice curve. So if you're on small streams, you're looking basically for any features, overhanging bushes, a changing in the pace of the current, and certainly deeper, slower areas. Now it can only be two foot, two foot six deep here, not very deep, even shallower than that. But you're looking for the backs of weed beds where it drops off, any sort of shelving where the natural food is gonna hold up for a few seconds longer. And that's where we're gonna try and get the bait. Obviously, it's gonna get a good dose of bread and bran and maggots. Here's another little tip guys, when you've never fished a place, and I've never fished this place before, over against that wall looks good, but hang on, 
down there in the mud, I can see that's where an angler's walked, just down here. So they come down here, right? They'd be standing here. Now, would they actually cast that way? I'm sort of trying to think, if I was fishing naturally, it's a natural progression with the flow of the river pushing against that wall over there. If food's coming down, it's going to hold up over there. So I reckon that the guys who fish this place are going to go somewhere over there with their feed, just almost up against that weed. And I think there might be a chance of gudgeon, perch, roach, anything like that. And we've seen a guy come down, another angler, one guy blank, he said nothing, so he's been all day, we've been here 40 minutes. Don't mind blanking with 40 minutes, do you? But another guy said there's been something like a seven pound, one ounce chub come out on a single maggot from the river Blackwater. That is a real specimen, trust me. In go the maggots. Let them trickle down. Let's see if we can't wiggle a fish out of here. Okay, people, now here is the totally awesome tip. People say, oh, you can't, you can't stick float in this shallow water. Well, you can get it to run through, but I'll tell you what you can also do. You can get your ground bait. You can make a ball of it, okay, like this. This is if you want the maggots to hold up a bit longer in one place. You hollow it out, you make a cup in there, scoop it all out like this, then you pile your maggots inside it, close it right up, and you throw that in the fast water. You can also put a stone in it. I used to do this explicitly for barbel down on the royalty fisher on the Hampshire Raven. In fact, it was the method with white ground bait. We needed binding agent of golden breadcrumbs as well because it's very fast down there and we catch a lot of barbel because this will very, eventually in the current takes all the particles off but it breaks up and as it breaks up, look inside. Yum yum, there's the maggots. So this is like a slow release in fast water and that's when I like using it. I'm going to halve that ball and I'm going to whale one out there and let those maggots trickle down slowly through the faster water. You can see down there, there's a white football, which is a bit unsightly, but it's a good mark for you to see it. I'll point it out with the road. There's a sawn off tree stump, probably an old willow by the look of it. Been cut off probably by the fisheries people, but there's a raft of weed there. Now that's a classic chub spot. And if you can run your float right past that, as close as you can get, and as slow as you can get, almost any bait, maggots, cheese, bread, whatever you want. If you had six or eight sort of swims like that, you run the float really tight past every chance of a chub. I'm going to give it a go before we pack up anyway. Trotting the float past any floating rubbish puts you in the best position for hooking a chub. But remember, you also have to pressure him away from the snag as he will be driving hard to get back in there. And if he makes it, you rarely get him out again. Well guys, no fish in the one hour and 10 that we fished on a river stretch we'd never even fished before, but the idea was to show you a few tips. And if only a few, well, let's face it, if one of those tips gets you one good fish, it's got to be worth watching, hasn't it? Final tip, final closeout tip. I can't stop fishing, I'm still going to close the veil arms. That'll stop me fishing. Got your maggots at the end of the day. There's a bite. No, we, at the end of the day, throw them in the river. Well, I'm not throwing them in the river. Put them in a plastic bag with no holes in it, please. And freeze them down live because on still waters, you can get carp that will come in and the anglers, the matchmen, actually fish with a dead maggot because the carp know that if the maggots are dead, they're drowned, the anglers have gone home. Little tip there. Off we go, we're gonna go home and get some tea, have a bit of a feed ourselves. Keep watching Totally Awesome Fishing Show. There's sure to be some more coming along. There'll certainly be some tips coming along. And I'll tell you what, the next show's gonna be full of fish. Trust me. While we just came out for a couple of hours of swim spotting, here at the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, we like to catch something. We have blank trips like the rest of the world, but fish are what we really love filming. Well guys, you've seen some of those tips on how to spot swims on a small stream like this, where we are on the black water. It's the last day of the season, didn't like not catching anything for you, so I had five sprats left and I've come up here to have a little twitch around because one of the guys said, 
when they had a match up here once before, they actually got bitten off by a pike. Now I've come up and I'm going to work my way right up and I'm going to go through each swim, four or five casts in each swim, just twitching the sprat on a single VB hook and just see if we can come up with something. Because these small streams, you know, they can hold some good fish in them, it's, it's surprising. I've not fished this far up here before, so all new. Let's crack on, let's see what we can do. Who knows, we might get lucky. It is, by the way, the last day of the season and the last few hours. Always take notice of when matches are held, as they can help in locating the best swims. Many matchmen will have silverfish grabbed by a pike in their swim. And that's what I like to hear, as I have had some great predator fishing by getting on a water just after a match has packed up. Or even move in swim after a pleasure angler's packed up. His bait would have created some sort of activity in the swim and any pike will soon move in to investigate. And what better method than that totally awesome twitch spread? I love it. Well guys, I've come down for the last minute on the last day of the season. I was with Mike the other day, we didn't catch anything with a stick float. I'm not saying I'm going to get anything now, but I have had what looks like a really nice pike grab my sprat. I think he's still got it. This would be a result if I do get it. Who knows? You never know. There's definitely something there. Oh yeah. Yes. It's a pike. It's a pike. It's probably the one that I lost the other day. It could be, yeah. Yes, General McKinley left the swim, just been chub fishing. You'd had chub to what was it here? Um, five five. Five pounds, five ounces? Yes. And I was fishing with Mike just for an hour in the evening and we got absolutely nothing. But we've got a pike here now. As usual. Yeah, that's the fish that I lost. I can't think of it. That's the same one, yeah? Yeah, it's the same one. Same size. Probably filming from there, I guess. If you lost him on nylon, he's on the right stuff now because he's on the wire trace. Yeah, absolutely. I knew he'd be there. He, he, as I say, he lives in this swim, I think. Oh. There we go. Oh, very nice too. Now, where's my boy in, Matt? Which pocket have I put mine? I'll tell you, that was the result of... of uh, I hate to sound grateful that you move from <laughs> No, I, I was fishing that swim first off, but I always move, alternate these two swims, you, you know. Just but, see him um, there. I'm just holding for it. I don't know if you can see that. I just got that one VB hook in there. Yeah. And hopefully it'll just pop out and the hook's out. Yeah. I'll just put this over here. I did come with a tripod because very often you never know what you're going to get. You never know how lucky you're going to get. And I, that was first cast in the swim. Yeah, I knew I, I knew it'd, it'd, be, it'd be around, as yeah. I say. That's, that's probably why I'm not getting any... Close. We haven't got the big camera. That's probably why I haven't, I'm not getting any chub. That could be it. Now, if I'm... But Probably have a couple more casts, I'll move on, you come back chub fishing, <laughs> and I'll come and video catch a big chub. Yeah, what yeah. a fish to get out of a small stream. No, oh, it's marvellous. This river's very underrated. I'd say he's about, I think he's about seven, I would say. Yeah. Looks about seven. So while he's recovering, you would say you were chub fishing yesterday? I chub fishing yesterday, yes, and I had um, four fish. The biggest was three pounds 13. I had a three seven and a three four and um, also a 2-4 uh, as well. Now, um, when I met you with Mike the other evening, you said there was somebody had a really big chub here. What was that? I've forgotten the weight. Um, that was a friend of mine. He had a 7-pound fish. 7 pounds? Further down the river, a 7-pound chub, yes. Good Lord. And it's mostly lunch and meat for those, is it, you think, the chub? Uh, well, he had his on single maggot, would you believe? Oh, but, really? Uh, but I normally use lunch and meat. Uh, I used to use worm all the time, but they this year they've gone off the worm. Oh, really? Um, and I started fishing at the start of the season um, with um, hair rigged halibut pellets super glued together on a hair rig. Oh, yes, yeah. Um, and I was catching a lot of chub. So yeah. you're on lunch and meat today, yes. last day of the season? Yeah, lunch and meat today. I was lunch and meat yesterday. Um, so far, no fish, but um, I will be here until uh, later on anyway. Well, I'll tell you what, I appreciate you telling me where to cast because it was first cast and he ate it out of sight. <laughs> Thank you. It's all right. So you got one more? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's nice fish, nice condition. Nothing is more satisfying than a big chub from a small stream. So a big chunk like that. Yep, a big chunk like that. That's the uh, 
All I do is I push the baiting needle in, and pull the hook through, twist it, back through. So you got it right buried in there. You haven't you haven't got your hair rigged or anything like that. Nothing at all. No. I mean, tried you can see then that fish had it. He took it. I tried hair rigging Graham, and yeah. it doesn't work. They, they just it take doesn't the bait. work. They take the bait. It's uh, off, gone. Off I know the what you mean. The nip had it. Um, and and uh, you know you don't. Get, I, I was missing too many good bites. So Any we, particular lunch of meat, or just what you got there? That well, uh, I buy this from. Aldi's. Yeah. And it's um it's the cheapest of the lot. It's 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 pork and ham. Yeah. Um and that does the job, yeah. And that does the job. I can see that now, yeah. Because it doesn't pull pull away, you know? Yes. Paul was casting his luncheon meat right under the overhanging raft of rubbish by the far bank. It's a classic spot, and within minutes he was back into yet another good job. And that was meat again, Paul? That was me to go in, yes. I just need to get my net now. Oh, right, let me get the net for you. Thank you. It's not a big fish, but it's another fish. Not a bad fish. Get him down there. Oh, that's a nice one again, yeah? Yeah. Between two and three pounds. He is, he's, he's getting up towards three, isn't he, I'd say? Yeah. This time of year, he's going to get to three. Brilliant. That's a lovely looking fish. It belies the size of the fish that are in it, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, yes. It's three pound one ounce. Three pound one, yeah. That's yeah. that barely made that extra difference. Yeah, yeah, three pound one. The carrier bag weighs nothing. No, not even worth deducting that. No, it's not. No, so it's yeah, three one. Anything over three pounds would be a good chub from a small stream. There's no need to put them in a keep net. Let them go downstream of where you caught them and it shouldn't disturb others in the shoal. With all the pressures of otters, crayfish, cormorants and poaching, we should all look after the remaining stock that our rivers have left. Well guys, I've run out of sprats. I've run out of my five sprats. I've put on a sideboard of rubber lure and I've actually got another pike. Not a big one couple of three pounds and you can see the sideboard and the lure sticking outside of his mouth there he's absolutely sucked it back that's no trebles just a straight single hook look at him right let's get him up there he is oh, what? Totally awesome, lucky again. Two pike, last few casts of the season. You couldn't ask better. One on a dead bait and one on an artificial lure. <laughs> Thank you.